Immortal John Hancock here with a with a very different type of video. I thought it'd be interesting to bring on my wife and uh, have her kind of talk about being married to me and what to expect from being with uh, a collector and gamer in a relationship, especially a long-term relationship. So check this out. Um, I think this would be a good video if, if you're uh, wanting to be with somebody or even sharing it with uh, somebody that you share your life with um, to to get a different perspective of, of how it is to uh, to live with someone that's a collector and gamer. Let's check it out. The Immortal John Hancock here for a very, very different type of video today. And I'd like to uh, introduce the most special guest ever in my life, my wife. Hi. Sarah Hancock. And so I thought it would be interesting to bring upon my wife, to talk to fellow collectors and gamers about how it is to be with a collector and gamer and some important things to know. So, Hello, I'm the Sarah Hancock. <laughs> so this is going to be very informal and this is just the way I roll. So anyways, uh, what's, a, what's, a, what's it like to be married to me? I mean, that's a very big question to answer, but it's fun. It's fun uh, being married to someone who has so many different interests and um, can just really talk to anybody about anything. He's very people-oriented and well-rounded. The most common question I get, I mean, I've um, been with John for, we were just discussing, almost 17 years. Yeah, it's a long time. And um, he has many different hobbies and has collected various things over the years. And so the most common question really that I've gotten uh, is, do I play video games? Very fair question. I like video games. I, you know, have very nostalgic memories of the original NES, the Power Pad, you know, the Game Boy, all of those things. But She I, plays to win. I do. <laughs> I do play to win. Yeah. I like to blame the controller when I don't or throw things. <laughs> that is right. And you can't pretend to let up because if, if, if you know that someone is playing light on you, you get pissed off. I thought this was supposed to be about... I know. <laughs> I'm, just saying, I'm just saying. Yes, it's true. Um, but I don't play uh, extreme. I'm not uh, anything more than your average casual. No, when I was pregnant with Justice, uh, okay. our son. Um, I played a lot, and then... What, what game was it? Puzzle Quest. Yes. Beat it. Yeah. Beat it, and... Obsessed. Yes, played it a lot. And that's when I think we knew we were having a boy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's some gender stuff I can yeah. fight there. But no, anyway. Um, but I really don't. But I um, value and honor the information, the knowledge. I think it's um, neat, but I don't, I don't, you know, kind of have the equivalent passion or knowledge that John does. I know a lot though. I know a lot. <laughs> I've acquired some information. Um, people also ask me, um, like basically in, in a more polite term, are you broke? You know, John has all these got games. Are you like in debt up to your eyeballs? How do you do this? You, you know, family of four, etc., etc. And um, uh, the answer is John's done a really good job. If you've watched his other videos, you've heard that he doesn't just get a paycheck and go out and buy games. He mm -hmm hunted in the wild, so to speak, back when you could find things in the wild. Yeah. <laughs> he buys, sells, trades, keeps, um, and then uh, replaces when he finds a better conversion of something. Always looks for liquidation sales, places going out of business, creepy little gross places that stink. Loves those. <laughs> They're like gems to him. I have sat in the car many a time oh, on yeah. my phone while he finds some gross, dirty little place to <laughs> scavenge and look for a gem. Yeah, those are back in the day. Um, what's it, What do you think is important for to, to, be with, to be with a gamer or a collector? If there's any helpful tips out there for anybody, for anybody that, that, that they need to know, especially if they're not really in the games, what, they're, what they should be ready for? Or... I mean, yeah, that's a good question. Very, very good question. I think that viewing a game, video game passion or hobby. Um, so my advice to a significant other would to be to view it as if it was anything else. Like if they were really into um, their pet, or really into horses, or really into I don't know fixing up old cars. It's might seem extreme to you because you don't have the same level of passion, but it's nothing to you know judge or put down just because it's not something that you understand just like if somebody's really into horses and you're like you couldn't pay me to ever get on a horse no thank you get away from me 
Same kind of thing, but you can respect that they really love horses. And the same kind of thing, I guess, would be my advice or my tip would be um, honor the that they're into that, um, even if you're not. I also think it's important, and it's good to know that communication is really important. Uh, you know, when you have a hobby or you're collecting, and you're with somebody to to clearly communicate. Um, this last year, uh, I made a pretty heavy purchase and. I had an open conversation with you about about that, and and it was, uh, you know, I I knew it's going to um, be a financial impact, and and uh, you know we had that discussion together. Like I wasn't going to do it unless you were on board with that, and and space is another thing. I thought it would be really funny oh. just now <laughs> to pretend like I didn't know about the heavy purchase. Oh, but anyway, yeah. like what? What? Oh my god. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and communication beforehand, mm -hmm. figure it out. And there are some purchases that we haven't done. There's a lot of purchases that John hasn't done. Yeah. Um, because we have bills, and there's real yeah. life, and there's food. And we had to <laughs> talk about it, and then the conversation was over. It was just, we can't afford that. Or, and, you know, one thing that's important to know is that uh, being a collector, I need space, I need time. But that space and time shouldn't impact or consume my time with my family and it's important to know that you know you've been really flexible with that you know you give me my game time it means so much to me or my PRG time or Callets Gamers or what other five bazillion other things that I do and I know that's hard so thank you Aww. Mwah. <laughs> yes yes together still 17 great years you know and um, it's important to know that, uh, you know, with being with a gamer and collector, that, that, that it's work and it's communication, it's commitment, you know, and then throw kids on top of it. Yeah, um, like we don't have a garage, which might, because we have a game room, uh, it might not seem like a big deal, like, oh, good use of space. Um, but we don't have anywhere for our children's bikes. If the camera was turned a little bit, you would see bikes in the background right now, things to store. We have no storage. <laughs> Um, and that is that is a sacrifice for um, the game collection itself because it takes up space. And mm -hmm. what John said a minute ago about um, flexible boundaries, kind of balance, making sure it's not it doesn't consume you or your time is really important too. Because you can honor someone's hobby all day long, but if it takes up 80, 90 percent of their time, energy, and money, uh, there's a problem because things are out of balance, and then other things would suffer. So yeah, even doing these YouTube videos, you know, it takes time and. Uh, kids to be occupied or quiet or etc. Yeah, I'm worried about what might be happening in the living room. <laughs> or, right like, or in the quietest room ever. It's also known as our kids' rooms because they always want to be around us and game or talk. And it's wonderful having kids and family, but it's also important to know that you know there's a time when you need to not collect and put the controller down and be with your family outside of you know being exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> so, anything else you'd like to say? Um, I interrupted you a minute ago. Were you going to go into something else? Um, we talked about, oh, the big purchase, oh, yeah. and then we we're going to go into something else. Oh, I don't know. Just keeping it real, just going back to communication, and just that, know that, um, it's, it, I think it's important to know what, what, what really is, is super helpful to me is that even though you're not into games a ton, that you support it, and that, and that I return that by showing my love for you and, and and being into your stuff and your things, which which is kind of funny. When, when she when she was with me, one of the first things she said was, I'm not a collector, you're a collector for both of us. Yeah, I, I still to this day yeah. think that collecting anything is like in the DNA and yeah. I don't have it, I don't collect anything. But um, little known fact uh, also is people assume that John plays games 24-7 or close to that, that he's beaten every game, that he's an expert in every game. He's an expert knowledge-wise in, in games and he's a good gamer. I mean, he can beat me even though I hate to admit it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes! But he, he doesn't play every game in every genre every day. I mean, yeah. uh, that's kind of like a misnomer of the John Hancock. Well, thank you so much for coming on my channel. Thanks for and, having me. And, uh, and anyways, uh, just important things to know about uh, if you're a gamer or collector, uh, what your partner should know. Thank you so much for all the views and subscribes. Uh, two videos a week. I will continue to do this with my wife's permission. <laughs> this is the immortal John Hancock with
Justine. The Sarah Hancock. All right. <laughs> Take care, folks. Have a good one.